Okay, this is exercise 4.3, configuring the DFS replication. Um, as covered in the Microsoft Official Academic Course, Administering Windows Server 2012 R2, Exam 70-411. Exam in this exercise, you're going to configure two folders, each on a different server. You will then configure DFS to replicate the content of one folder to the other server. Now the mindset is that you have a project folder that must be available in New York and Paris. Some of these files are large, so they take some time to open over a slow WAN link. You can use DFS replication to create a replicate of the file share at both offices. The approximate time to complete this exercise is 30 minutes. So with that, let's get started. We're going to go right to Server 1. I'm already on Server 1. and From the previous exercise, we still had DFS management open. So I'm going to go ahead and close this for now. So we're going to create another folder. So let's create, um, open up our Windows Explorer, go into our C drive, and we're going to create, so right click and new folder, and we're going to call this share three. And again, we're going to share this folder. Oops. Left click, right click, properties, sharing, advanced, share this folder, permissions, allow, and then OK, and then OK, and then close. And then we're going to go to server 2. And create a folder called share 3. So new folder, share 3. We're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to right click and properties, sharing, advanced, share, permissions, full control allow, and then OK, OK, and close. Now let's flip back over to Server 1. We're going to go into the DFS Management Console. If you don't have it up, that's not a big deal. I'm just going to close this. We can go through our Server Manager, click on Tools, and DFS management. And I'll go ahead and minimize our server manager. And now we want to right click replication. See if I expand namespace, this is what we did in the last exercise. So now we're going to look at replication and right click and new replication group. We're going to click on Next. Name of replication group is going to be Rep1, REP1. And then click on Next. Now we'll go ahead and click on Add. We want to type in server01. And then click on OK. Then we want to click on Add again. This time we're going to type in server02. And then OK. Okay, so now that's set. And if you're following in your lab manual, you're gonna. This is what you're gonna take a screenshot of. All right, so here we're gonna click on next. In the topology section, we're gonna click on next. On the replication group schedule bandwidth, we're gonna click on next. 
brings us to question seven. If you have limited available bandwidth between two sites, what can you do to make better use of the available bandwidth so that users are not hampered when accessing remote resources? And the answer is by using the replication group schedule and bandwidth, you can reduce the bandwidth used by the DFS replication during the day. All right, here we are on the primary member page. We want to select server 01. So I'm just going to click on my drop down arrow, select server 01, and then click on next. Now we want to click on add. And here we want to type in the share 3. So C colon slash share 3. And then click on OK. Here we're back on the replication, on the replicates page. We want to click on next. On the local path of share three. We want to select on edit. And we want to click enabled. and type C colon, oops, slash share three. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And then now we'll click on Next and then click on create. And then we'll go ahead and click on close. And then in the replication delay message is displayed, we'll go ahead and click on OK. We're going to expand the replication node, which it already is. And we're going to click on the rep1 node. And if you're following along in your lab manual, you're going to do a print screen at this position. Okay, we are still on server one. We want to open the share three folder with the file explorer. And we want to right click new and text document. We're going to name this DOC1 and enter. <clears throat> We're going to open up the, the document and type in your name. I'm just going to put in first, last name first name, last name. File, save, file, exit. Okay, so now we've saved it. Now, we're going to go over to server two. and open up the share three folder and verify that the doc one text file has replicated to server two it might take a minute or two to replicate okay so it did take a minute but it did eventually um come over. <coughs> so that worked. All right, now
under the membership tab. So here we have membership status. We're going to right click server 01. So we're going to right click server 01. And we're going to click on properties. And we want to click on the staging tab and change the quota. to 8192. Click on the Advanced tab. And you'll see that the quote in megabytes here is 4096. And a conflict deleted path of share three DFS private conflict that deleted. All right, so we're going to go ahead and click on OK. And that's going to take us to our next couple of questions. What is the default quota for the staging path? And that was 4096. What is the default quotator? for conflict and de, uh, deleted path. And we saw that the default quota for conflict and deleted path was also 4,096. So we'll go ahead and minimize this. And now we're going to right click on server two and go into properties. Click on the staging tab and change the quota to 8192. And we're going to click on OK. And if you're following along the lab manual, this is where you'll take your next screenshot. This is the end of this exercise, the end of this video, and the end of this lab. Lab 5, we're going to review configuring the file server resource manager.